can enter into the presence of God. No sin. Every sin we commit here has to be washed away by Christ. And Christ, he's, he wrote the book. He knows whose name's in it. Okay? But we can't deserve it. We can't earn it. We only get it because he loves us. And that's it. He loved us enough to die for us. Even Saddam Hussein, even Hitler, even any other Charles Manson, you name him, he died for Barack Obama and Hillary Clinton. He died for them too. Jeffrey Dahmer. Jeffrey Dahmer. I've heard that. I don't know that. I've heard that. I don't claim to know things. <laughs> if, I sat, if I sat and talked to him, I might be able to answer that. James Dobson. Wow. That's probably legitimate then. I think James Dobson is a good Christian man. That's pretty cool. Dr. James Dobson. That's a whole other train of thought right there. Adventures in Odyssey. <laughs> oh, I was that kid. Boy, had he. Anyway. <laughs> right? <laughs> Uh, anyway, doubt is a perfectly natural thing, okay? The enemy is not omniscient. He doesn't know what we're thinking, okay? But I tell you one thing, know your adversary because he's been around a very, 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 very long time. If you notice, the Bible does not state when the angels were made. Their creation is not listed. So likely, they existed before the creation. Which, Genesis 1. Okay? Just like the water, the, the, the spirit hovered over before God started, the angels probably existed then too. Okay? Before then. Lucifer has been kicking around for a long, long time. At least, at the very least, as long as the dawn of man. So he has watched every single generation of human in every corner of this planet for somewhere between six and 8,000 years. Okay, He can't read your mind, but they've been at this long enough. They know what's going on. And when they poke you with something, a little bit of doubt, a little bit of temptation, they can see it in your eyes, whether they're getting through or not. They know what it looks like. And that's one of the reasons it's so important that when the enemy comes against you, you stand up and you basically, you get hold of your Bible, you do whatever you got to do, you get them away from you. And I tell you what, if every time the enemy comes against you, you pick up your Bible, you start reading God's word out loud... They're going to stop messing with you so much. They're still going to do it, but they're going to let up a little bit because that's offensive to them. You know, there's a word whenever everyone's heard the uh, scriptures where it talks about the, uh, the, uh, the whole armor of God, right? And it talks about the sword of the spirit. Right? Your Bible is the sword of the spirit, right? I think we, the, the translators use the word sword. Because it sounds better. The Greek word is rhema. Okay? This word is referring to a six inch dagger. Or you could almost call it a short sword, but it's, 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 it's only about that long. So pretty much it's a dagger. Okay? Now the purpose behind a dagger, if you were to ask any assassin, first they teach you the sniper rifle, and then the machine gun, and then the pistol, and the last thing any assassin will ever learn will be the knife. Because the knife is up close, it's personal, means you get near your target, and you have to use precision cuts. Now with a broadsword, you can just swing that sucker and take someone's head off, right? The sword of the spirit is not that kind of sword. It's a rhema. It's a precision instrument. Okay? In the Greek, it's rhema. And that, that, it, it, that meant when, it, when, I, when I heard that, and I'm like, that's good. Because that means for every attack, 
that ever comes against you, there's a scripture to counterattack it with. And it isn't a big broad sword swinging thing. It's a precision verse. A verse used to strike a fatal blow to the enemy to make them stop. To stop them dead in their tracks. Now you can just use the whole word of God, but you can't read it that fast. Okay? So for everything in your life, every conflict that comes up, there is an answer in your word for that, in your Bible. There's an answer. There's a verse for that. But you know what? You ain't never going to find it or learn how to use that rhema if you don't pick it up and use it. Any good fencer or swordsman will tell you they will practice for an hour or two a day. You don't even need to do that much. If you got the time, use it. Get after it. But you know what? At least 15, 20 minutes. I mean, this this is a God who we all expect or hope. He's our blessed hope that we're not going to end up burning eternity, eternally separated from him. The least we can do is give him 15, 20 minutes a day, right? Is he not worth that to us? He should be. And if he's not, then those of us who he's not worth it to, we really need some soul searching. Even me, I have a hard time reading at any book. I don't read. I don't like to read. I have to force myself to read my Bible. It is the only book I read because I hate reading. Not a reader. Unless I'm trying to find a piece of information to... Like, I can study. Study notes for this. I do this all day, every day. I'm doing research and trying to learn things, and I like to do that. But just to sit and read to read? Nope. Hate it. I have to force myself to do it. So, if you're one of those, I feel your pain. But we got to do it. So, when you have doubt, it's okay. What you do with that doubt, and how quickly you squash it and put it back where it belongs... Is what's going to determine is what's going to determine whether or not it's an actual hindrance to you. When something comes against you, it doesn't have to hinder you. You can look at it, laugh at it, and keep going, or you can let it bother you. I let that one bother me for a little while. The doubt, I let the doubt creep in, and for about a month or two, it was bugging me, and I couldn't figure out why, why I was having a struggle with this doubt. And the doubt was making me wonder if I was really truly saved. And it's like, and I look back on this, and this was only four or five months ago. And it was just, it was, it was an attack that the, the enemy found just the right way to get it in there. And I didn't have a defense for it. And now I do. No, no, no. I was doubting my salvation. Why in the world? I'm such a wretched man. What does he want with me? I was realizing how little I deserve his grace. Yeah, but see, that was making that was bothering me. It was the concept behind it that was bothering me. And it was it was making me doubt my salvation because it's like I don't deserve it. Not that I had never heard that before, but it's like it it's almost like it clicked, it hit home just how little I deserve it, which is None. As the song goes, but he loved me anyway. Didn't matter. He still loves me. Worthless as I am. One of my favorite verses is that, Oh, wretched man that I am. I do the things that the things I don't want to do, I do and the things I should do, I don't. It's like, that's my verse. That's my, he wrote that for me. Y'all, y'all might benefit from it, but he wrote it for me because I'm a hard headed and, not head. Anyway. Questions, comments, concerns? Anything? That's okay. That's all I care about. You know what? I, that's why I don't like to do this all formal and everything. You know, I like it to be able to be relaxed. Someone has a question, bring it up. Because sometimes I have a problem with rabbit holes. I'll see a rabbit hole and I will dart down it. And I have to climb my way back up so we can keep back going with what we're talking about. And I'll see another one. I'll go that direction next time. And I get lost sometimes. And sometimes I never get, I don't use half my notes. I don't think I use any of them tonight. Except for like two or three things. 
<laughs> but huh <laughs> but we're going to fix that we're going to fix that okay so my question for tonight who was ultimately at fault Adam or Eve All right, let's hear it. Why? That's part of the reason, yes. Why else? It's a two-part answer. At least from my perspective, anyway. One, he was made first. He was the head, right? Just like in a marriage. It's a marriage like any other marriage. So we know the standard of God as the man's head of the household. It's ultimately his decision. Where was Adam when he was being tempted? Where was Adam when Eve was being tempted? (laughs) He was breaking horses. (laughs) He might have been fishing. You guys don't understand. You see these cats God made, man. 12 pounders. I don't have to need a hook. They come to me. (laughs) They get in line. The Bible actually says where he was. It's right there. It says, when Eve saw that the fruit was good for eating, she she took a, she she ate it and gave to her husband. He was right there the whole time. He didn't say a peep. He stood there and let his woman be tempted. And like a sucker, I mean, you got a beautiful naked woman in front of you. She's like, okay, <laughs> and he eats it too. Well, that's true. So, so we're just see. We're just intuitively dumb. That's basically what it is. Men, men, we're just intuitively dumb. I mean, he had a beautiful woman right there. He didn't even know she was naked. It's like, good Lord. Here, here, here's my opinion on this, though. Okay. What did Adam say? The woman you gave me gave to me of the fruit and I ate. Well, look, look, look deeper than that. She gave. What did Adam do when she said here? What did he do? Which required a what? A choice. He knew the consequences. He chose. What did Eve do? Did Eve choose? In a sense, yes, but under false pretenses. She was deceived. It does not say Adam was deceived. It says Eve was deceived. She said, the serpent deceived me. Because now she knows she was deceived. Before, she didn't know. She was no more intelligent. She'd only been alive for who knows how many days. She was no more intelligent than a toddler. There isn't. But I don't think they were there for 10,000 years cultivating the garden. You know, I highly doubt that. It's possible because the tree of life was there. They could have been there for a billion years. We never would know the difference. It doesn't say. But I speculate it wasn't very long. You know, I would say maybe a year at the most guessing. Okay, that's pure speculation. And just so you guys know, if I'm sure, I'll tell you I'm sure. If it's speculation, I'll tell you I'm I'm just spitballing here. Okay? I just have this feeling it was not eons they were there. But Adam made a choice. Now, here's the real question. Why? Why did Adam make that choice? Well, I think he, I think he was enticed as well. He's thinking, well, maybe, you know, maybe God is being unreasonable. Whatever. You think so? Mm, yes, but it doesn't say he was deceived. It says, she gave to me and I ate. And now, so what did he see? He saw her eat, right? Don, what would you do to spend the rest of your life with your wife? Would it be okay if she died tomorrow and you would live another 10, 20 years? Would that be okay with you? Or if you could... 
Well, yes, but I mean, if you had the choice and you could prevent it, would you do whatever you could to?